MoneyPodcast.com. Bitcoin maximalist or no? Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, the, it's the same same idea. Uh, there's so much things happening in Bitcoin, and we don't even have time to look at all of them. So if we start getting distracted by other coins, we will not do anything. And uh, I'm already late implementing many tools I would like to have on the Nodo. And uh, yeah, if I if I start implementing other coins, it will be a nightmare to maintain. And uh, and ideologically, I think that there is, uh, I mean, there is no other coin that can accumulate the same proof of work that Bitcoin already did. You you would have to go back in time to do that. You are listening to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Visit our website for free resources to aid you in your pursuit of self liberation. Old Vanu publications, podcasts, guest articles, and much more. Go to vanupodcast.com. And now your hosts, Shane and Jason. And welcome to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to coercion. I'm your host, Shane. This podcast, everything found on the website, is covered by BIPCOT's No Government License, so allows reuse and modification to anyone except for governments and the bludgies thereof. Learn more by visiting BIPCOT.org. So today we return to our Crypto Anarchism series once again. Uh, last week, I spoke with Max Hillebrand from the World Crypto Network. Uh, we took a deep dive into the privacy and security tools available for Bitcoin right now, in addition to some technical details of basic things like Bitcoin transactions. So if you haven't listened to, listen to that one, uh, definitely check that out. Uh, I highly, uh, definitely do uh, highly recommend it. Uh, but yeah, one of the advices we spoke about uh, a lot was uh, the Noddle. Uh, the website is shop.noddle.it. Uh, this device can run your Bitcoin full node, your Lightning Network node, uh, can serve as your cold storage, and it has interoperability with a number of great open source projects, such as BTC Pay Server, the cold card wallet for offline transactions, Wasabi wallets, and uh, much more. Uh, it really is, well, you know, one piece of hardware that every Bitcoin maximalist needs, uh, or anyone that uh, holds a lot of Bitcoin. I think it's just probably just a wise idea. Uh, so today I'm joined by the founders of Noddle, uh, Keto Miner and I Ask. Uh, on Twitter. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, how they started it, possible philosophical underpinnings or influence, and uh, much more. So without further ado, uh, welcome to the Vani uh, podcast, guys. Uh, how, how are you doing this evening? Hi, we're doing great. Thanks for having us. Hey, Shane, we're good. Yeah. Good to hear. Good to hear. So I guess uh, I guess uh, I'm, I'm curious, um, you know, just, just out of my own curiosity, how'd you guys find out, find out about me and uh, the Vani podcast? Uh, actually, by Smuggler and his book, Ah, okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that uh, um, there have been quite a few folks from the Bitcoin world that have uh, found the podcast through my interview with Smugglers. So that's, uh, uh, that's, that's it's great to hear. That's uh, great to hear. I'll have to get him back on uh, sometime in the, uh, in the near future. But uh, I guess uh, we'll, we'll start with, uh, I guess, uh, brief introductions here. Um, yeah, either one of you uh, jump in. Uh, who are you and uh, what do you do? Yeah, so, well, so uh I start here, so I, I'm the technical guy of the band, and uh, actually I'm in the open source community for quite a long time now, like 50, 25 years probably, always mm -hmm. passionate about electronics and computers, and uh, I was looking for something in all these open source movements, which and, and I couldn't find what it was. Uh, also, I got interested in the hacking industry, like the CCC in, uh, in Germany, uh, loft heavy industries in the US and all these early hacking groups, uh, Kevin Meeting, of course. And uh, a few years ago, I came across HCPP, and uh, that was a big revelation in my life, actually. To uh, I finally could put a word on, on my ideology and what I was looking for. Um, so, yeah, so, since I'm not really good at math and uh, not really able to hack or, or make any math, so I just, but I'm pretty good at assembling stuff. So I decided to to build this project. Awesome! Very cool. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely very cool. So you said uh, twenty twenty five years, I guess, in the open source community. Um, would you mind, uh, um, you know, just uh, I'm sure some of the listeners are curious uh, some of the some of the stuff you've worked on uh, in the past. Um, I I was actually a technical writer for many French magazines uh, about Linux, and uh, I worked for the O'Reilly's. Uh, uh, book uh, edition uh, translating books from English to French about the links kernel mostly. Okay, 
Very nice, very nice. Um, so, uh, um, so I ask, I guess, uh, yeah, why don't you uh, provide us uh, with your uh, brief introduction? Uh, who are you and uh, what do you do? Yes, so basically, uh, right now, for the time being, I go by by the name of Asquieto, Um and I'm actually um, a former banker, or, or soon to be former banker. Um, at least that's what I hope. <laughs> Um, I came in like ideologically, um, just out of curiosity, basically to, to Bitcoin and, you know, probably same path as a lot of people when you, when you fall down the rabbit hole, except that I actually stuck to Bitcoin and only Bitcoin because I felt like the rest was just, I don't know, uh, probably a waste of time or, um, not interesting enough to take me away from Bitcoin. Um, sure. So I kind of fell into that three years ago and never swayed from that. And, you know, now in retrospect, it's probably a very good thing. Um, you know, I understand probably why some people might be tempted to go to other places, but um, I really see no point in it right now. Um, and basically along the way, I was fortunate enough to, to meet a lot of people, I guess, you know, just the curiosity aspect of it is there's so much stuff to take in. It's so complicated, especially when you're not like a technical guy, mm -hmm. um, that you have to go talk to people. And I was fortunate enough to meet some really uh, smart and interesting people who who were capable of sometime translating stuff that's complicated into really simple words and concepts. And I just stuck with the crowd and uh, was very fortunate so far. Right, right, yeah, and you know, I, I, I certainly agree with you. I know just talking to uh, to Smuggler and Cipher Assassin and uh, Max Hillebrand just on this podcast. I mean, uh, I think my my Bitcoin education, uh, you know, was uh, I, I guess uh, uh, put into hyperspeed, um, you know, over those uh, over the course of those five or six hours, or however long uh, however long it was. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you 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 got to talk to people, especially people that uh, that know a lot more than you do. Um, that's where uh, um, you know that's that's where yeah. I've, I've gained a lot of value. You have to be curious. Yeah, you have to be really curious and open to other things. Uh, I guess you have to be willing to accept or at least like tell other people that there's a lot of stuff you don't know and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. uh, people are actually very understanding and helpful, um, you know. Right, yeah. It's important to, to, to say that you don't know it. Right. Yeah. You can't, uh, you can't fill that gap of your knowledge if you don't acknowledge that it exists. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you, right there with you. So I'm curious just as, as kind of a follow-up question to, um, to, to where you are. Um, so, um, and, and it really doesn't make any difference to me. Bitcoin doesn't need it. Um, whatever they do, it, it doesn't really matter. The technology and, and, you know, the network is there, but do you see Bitcoin playing any role within mainstream banking? Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm just, I'm just curious, especially with, uh, you know, with your background. Well, I, I I don't know. Basically, what was really fascinating for me when I started the whole like move towards Bitcoin was how wide ranging it is of a topic, um, and it redefines a lot of different things in life uh, that, that that are important. I mean, banking is is something that you know there's nothing bad about it. Uh, maybe the way it's done and like. I don't know, like, um, you know, money printing is a problem, et cetera. But I mean, the, the role of a bank in financing like life is not a bad, bad thing at all. So, um, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a huge shift in, in opportunities for, for people to build like better, better structures. Um, the problem we have sometimes if, is with um, the companies, the way they're set up, actually, uh, the role of the government's playing all this setup, um, you know, that's a lot of, you know, things that, that often bother us a ton. Um, so, I mean, there, there'll be a lot of room for banking and in, in Bitcoin banking for sure. Definitely. But I think it's still far, far away. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. So, um, I guess I'll start with, uh, with, uh, um, keto miner again. Um, where, where do you consider yourself, uh, ideologically, uh, an anarchist, cypherpunk, crypto anarchist, uh, et cetera? Uh, I, I don't like to call myself names because I, I think it's up to the other people to do that. But 
Um, I think the non-capitalist would be the the thing which does, describes me most. Okay. Um, like like uh, avoiding to to feed the system uh, as much as I can, and I think that uh, that shows in how we run our business today, uh, which is totally off the books and uh, trying to make us and our customers avoid as many taxes and uh, coercion as they can. Awesome. I like that. Yeah, I, I, I definitely like that. Definitely like that. So um, what about you, uh, Ask you, uh, where do you consider yourself uh, ideologically? Yeah, I, I guess more or less that the same thing is I, I don't necessarily like all these tags because I get lost in all the details and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But um, I would consider myself as being like liberty seeking for sure um someone who doesn't like and who feels like there's a lot of coercion and i really don't like that um i don't think any one of us has a boss and i think that's the right way to do um and that's really important and i think it's a fight and a struggle and i think we've reached a point in in society where we we really need to push back and this is a pretty good time to do it because you have more tools than you used to. So that's what makes the whole adventure interesting for us here. Um, and I think that's part of our of our of our build here. Um, so just you know, looking for more personal freedom and um, you know, minding our own business. That's pretty much it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, that's a great answer. Great answer for sure. So um, now, um, I, and I, I really should have, uh, and, and maybe it came up naturally in conversations, uh, but I really should ask this, ask this question more often. But uh, when did you uh, guys first come across Bitcoin and, uh, and, and how did it happen? Um, and I guess we'll start with, uh, um, with uh, Ask You this time. Well, uh, I don't remember exactly when it was. And, and I don't know if it was Bitcoin or blockchain or both at the same time, basically. But uh, let's discuss is reading basically the press you know and like mainstream media and um it was you know it gives a very very poor description and when you read it years later the description is still the same it's really bad so basically i guess i was lucky that i was curious enough to dig in myself um and eventually met you know like i said a bunch of good knowledgeable Bitcoiners in Paris, because that's where we live right now, um, who who gave me access to more resources. And uh, anybody who falls down the rabbit hole really goes through a ton of reading um, and just expands your horizons a little bit. And just like Kyo was saying, um, a lot of what's been going on in our personal lives right now, you put things together and you're like, geez, this makes sense now. I kind of like, we had intuitions before that we couldn't, that I couldn't necessarily explain as like, it all kind of makes sense, like what my personality is and and why this means so much to me, you know? Um, so it's kind of a natural fit that I feel like I stumbled on almost by accident, but I'm drawn to even more now, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, it's I- It's kind of I... freaky. Right, right. No, I, I, I certainly agree. I certainly agree. Uh, so, what about, uh, what about you, Keto Miner? How'd you, uh, become, how'd you, uh, you know, come across Bitcoin? And uh, yeah, when? For, for, for me, it was probably in 2010 when Second Life was a big thing, and, uh, and for me, it was just another type of virtual money in some for some gaming or something, and I didn't really look into it uh, seriously. And uh, now I regret that I didn't buy a bunch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Although it's right. Uh, and second time in probably 2014, I actually tried to build a hardware wallet, uh, like a credit sized, uh, credit card sized uh, e ink hardware wallet. And uh, of course, the project failed because there was no traction and because the tech was not really ready for that. And um, yeah, really became serious about Bitcoin two and a half years ago after ICPP. Uh, that, that was really the, the thing that changed everything. Right, 
Right. Yeah. And I was going to, I was going to speak to, uh, to something that you brought up, ask you about, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, why, why you're so passionate about it. Um, and I mean, for, for me, I, 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 I made my first, I guess, Bitcoin transaction in 2015. I just, it was just an experiment. I wanted to see if I could buy gold with Bitcoin and I was able to, um, but it's, uh, it's, but trying to, I, I saw KYC and AML even back then before really understanding Bitcoin, I saw that as kind of uh, defeating the whole entire purpose. So it took a long time to find an exchange and it was actually one of those, um, it was actually one of those, I guess, virtual gaming currency exchanges, virtual world exchange, um, where they offer the second life tokens and stuff. Um, but they also offer Bitcoin and they let you buy and sell Bitcoin with PayPal. So, um, <clears throat> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, I, I really didn't understand the significance of it until, um, I guess when I started watching a lot of Andreas Antonopoulos, um, I guess beginning of last year and, um, I don't know. It's still, I, it's, I still didn't fully get it then, though. Um, it wasn't until I started looking into the privacy and security tools available, like Noddle, that I really realized, holy shit, like, and, and, and with, like, the, the, the focus on off-grid transactions, like, uh, yeah, that was my thought, was, holy shit, you know, Bitcoin is ready. Um, you know, like, there's a lot of work to be done, but, um, like, you know, you know the, the the privacy privacy is here. Lightning Network is is helping with scaling, or and it, it'll only get better. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there, there's a lot to be uh, you know, it's it, it's it's really easy to get passionate about it, um, especially in the realm of personal freedom. Well, for sure, yeah, it, it's definitely the early days, and all this tech is is nice and everything, but uh, it's very very early. And uh, I mean, we start having some privacy tools on Bitcoin. Uh, but we should be very careful about who is running them and how we are using them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we'll probably say in a few years that we so much better now, you know, and I mean, there's still so much to understand and, you know, we understand quite a bit, but it's probably nothing compared to, you know, what we'll globally understand in a few years. Right. Yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to foresee, um, you know, what what sort of what sort of a change or impact Bitcoin will have on 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 things. Yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's hard to foresee for sure. So I, I guess uh, I'll point. So there's a, po a point on your uh, on your website, and uh, I had a feeling this was the case. Um, general, uh, I, I thought that yeah, I thought this was the case because of the type of folks that you know uh, promoted Noddle. Um, but uh, you have on your site uh, um, as you know as some some of the interoperability stuff. Um, shit coins probably possible but optional and not supported by us. So um, would you guys consider yourself uh, Bitcoin? Uh, and you don't like you don't like labels, but um, you know like I, I I'm just you know just just curious about about these things. Uh, would you consider yourselves a Bitcoin maximalist? Uh, and if, if so, why? And if not, then, then why not? I don't have time for anything else. Um, I'm fine if other people look at other stuff, you know, I mean, yeah, sometimes you don't necessarily pay enough respect to the fact that like we're all individuals. We might have different ideas, concepts, whatever. So if someone else wants to do something else, it's not my problem and I'm fine with that. And I can you know, accept that. And I, I'm really not bothered by that. But I personally will not look at anything else right now because I think it's a waste of my time. Um, and that's it, you know, and there's nothing bad about it. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, what about you, uh, uh, Keto Miner? Bitcoin maximalist or no? Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, the, it's the same, same idea. Uh, there's so much things happening in Bitcoin and we don't even have time to look at all of them. So if we start getting distracted by other coins, we will not do anything. And uh, I've already late implementing many tools I would like to have on the Nodo. And uh, yeah, if I if I start implementing other coins, it will be a nightmare to maintain. And, uh, and ideologically, I think that there is, uh, I mean, there is no other coin that can accumulate the same proof of work that Bitcoin already did. You you would have to go back in time to do that. So, um, yeah. I mean, like a good example for that is, for example, we've had um, people come see us and say, oh, can you implement this or that? Um, can we run another like shitcoin on it and et cetera? And we always turn those people down. But at the same time, we had someone else who bought a Noddle and who's running the Noddle still today, who um, is techy enough that she managed to actually run three other coins, I think, on it um, at the same time, like Monero, uh, Pirate Chain, and something else. I forget the, the last one. Hmm. Um, and basically, she came to us and she talked to Keo Miner and she explained what she did. And when he saw the way she did it, basically he said, I love it because 
she understand my entire architecture. She didn't break anything that I did. And she kind of built her stuff on top of it the same way. It's open source. You have mm-hmm. full access to the noddle. So you can do whatever you want when you buy the device. We don't need to know about it, et cetera. And so they started talking a little bit. And now, I mean, she's on our Telegram group. Uh, we talk to her fairly often, and we think it's great. Um, she's making her own personal use out of it. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, we talk. It's fine. Right. Yeah. 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 That's, uh, that's, that's fascinating. Uh, definitely. Definitely. And that's, uh, you know, that, I think that's, uh, that's a net positive. Um, and, and I would definitely lean more towards, towards maximalism now, just because there's, I realized that, uh, I, like whenever, um, I was, you know, talking to people, they'd be like, have you heard of this project? Have you heard of this project? No, no. And there'd be a dozen projects that I hadn't heard of. And that was just in the altcoin space. And then once I, I, I kind of immersed myself in, in, within, in the Bitcoin realm, there was so much stuff happening there too. Um, and, uh, as, 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 uh, um, Keto Miner, uh, you know, alluded to, you know, the, there's no other coin, no other proof of work coin that can get close to the hash power of the Bitcoin network. Um, at least, uh, you know, not, not right now and not for the foreseeable future. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, yeah, I, do, I, do, I do love, I, I do love the, the open source, I, I guess the, the self-directed education, uh, you know, path of, uh, blockchain and open source, wh- whatever it is, even, even if it is a shit coin, um, if people are teaching themselves how to do something complicated, um, and they don't need it and they don't really need, uh, they, and they're doing it, you know, just, just out of their own passion and interest. I think that's fantastic regardless of what they're working on. Yeah. I mean, sometimes like people get into the, these arguments, you just feel like they, they're probably insecure, you know. Um, we feel fine with what we're doing. That's good enough for us, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Kino Monitor, do you have anything you want yeah, to add? Yeah, and, wa- and one thing, you, yeah, I, th- I think one, one thing which is important is that I've built this initially for my own use, and uh, um, it's really a product that I, I didn't find on the market that I wanted to have. And uh, since I don't care about any altcoins or shitcoins, um, yeah, it's running on the Bitcoin and that's it. Mm-hmm. it. It's still something I'm using every day. And uh, and yeah, I, I have a bunch at home and uh, and a bunch of the, in a data center. And yeah, I, I'm enjoying using my own product. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly, and, and and yeah, you know, like as you guys said, we're 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 still very early on in this, and uh, there there's some there's some needs out there that are pretty niche that people haven't taken on yet. So, um, I mean, you you saw a need for something like uh, like Noddle, and uh, yeah, I mean, what what other option do you have? Well, you have to build it yourself because it doesn't exist. Um, so yeah, kind of yeah, along that uh, along that same line of uh, line of thought, uh, I, I I like it. So um, I'm 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 curious, just uh, more uh, again, more in terms of you know philosophical underpinnings. Um, so so keto miner, you said that you've you've been in kind of the open source for for a long time. Um, was there uh, you know was there any cypherpunk uh, involved? Uh, did you were you ever involved with the cypherpunks? Um, and uh, I guess was there any influence on on that uh, and and creating uh, you know the noddle? Yes, I was pretty close to, you know, before we had coin mixing, we had mail mixing. Uh, maybe you heard about a tool called Mixmaster mm-hmm. uh, or anonymous remailers. Um, so I was pretty close to that community back in the times. And uh, I actually discovered pretty recently that some people I know for many years were involved in that too, which means that it really worked because I didn't know their identity. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah, so... So there was that, there was early adoption and use of PGP encryption uh, and, and encryption in general, uh, all the forms of encryption on, on computers. And um, and all this hacking community, I mean, the CCC is probably, the Chaos Computer Club is probably one of the biggest hackers groups in, in the world. Uh, they are based in Berlin, and uh, it, it was always my dream to to meet these people. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to any of those events yet, but hopefully next time. Right. Okay. Very interesting. And uh, what about uh, you? Ask you. Was there any uh, cipher? Were you ever involved in uh, you know the cypherpunks? Was there any uh, was there any influence uh, uh, from them? Uh, you know, in getting getting involved and in, and in, uh, you know coming out with this uh, with this product. Well, I guess it was path of part of my, my Bitcoin learning, I guess, that um, I dug into all of that. I read it all. Um, I actually have, like, above my dining table, I have a huge poster of, like, Tim Mays, uh, Cyberpunk Manifesto. Um, so it's stuff that I've learned, and um, it's stuff that means a lot 
uh, definitely. Um, and I mean, maybe I didn't say it enough um, before, but like the people we basically run into at the conferences or, or talk to on a daily basis, et cetera, I mean, they're all Bitcoin only basically. So, I mean, it is what we are. Um, mm -hmm. And all of them come from that cypherpunk uh, movement pretty much, you know, that's where the roots are. I mean, there, a lot of them are, or like at least very libertarian or very Austrian, um, you know, that's the backgrounds of, of most of them. And, um, and they understand each other, even, you know, sometimes they're a little different. Uh, they understand each other. We understand them. They understand us because, you know, there's a lot of common um, conceptions, I think, that we share. Yeah, and, you know, people like uh, Smuggler, Frank Brown and uh, Paul Rosenberg, by the way, if you didn't have him yet on the podcast, I think he, it, it would be really great to have him. Um, he, Paul Rosenberg basically wrote the Bible of uh, cypherpunks. Um, and he anticipated a few years before it all happened uh, that, it that it will happen and even some precise locations where it happened. So it's pretty fascinating. And we, we had the chance to spend last year in Prague many hours talking with him every morning because uh, we were coming early to the conference and he was uh, having coffee there too. And we were basically hanging out and, and talking about our ideas and, and lives. And it was really interesting. And uh, you're, you're talking about Paul Rosenberg, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I've, uh, I, I've, I interviewed uh, Paul on Skype once uh, a couple of years ago, and then I actually went up and interviewed him in Chicago in person. And then he came out to the Midwest Peace Liberty Fest and gave a talk. Um, I invited him out there. So, um, yeah, I love, I love Paul. And, uh, I mean, a lodging of Wayfaring Men and um, some of his other, I guess, uh, and, and the Breaking Dawn and, and, and his books have inspired me to write, actually write a, uh, start writing an anarchist fiction book on my own. So, um, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Paul's, Paul's, Paul, Paul's incredible for sure. But um, <clears throat> yeah, and there's a lot of similarities. I mean, I mean, a lot of us agree on on, on these things. You know, um, the necessity to to build like alternative markets, um, and I don't think we've seen that yet, really, at a large scale with uh, with Bitcoin. And I think that's probably what's coming next. Sometimes, you know, in the mid future. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty happy to say that at our very low scale and very low level, we are helping some people to start accepting Bitcoin and Lightning payments for their activities in parallel to their uh, legit life, let's call it, uh, including ourselves. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah, we we are trying to participate and, and, and help people to do that. Awesome. Awesome. So um, I, I guess uh, uh, we'll, we'll kind of uh, move on. I guess uh, not really move on, but continue continue uh, on with uh, with Nidal here. I mean, what was what was the uh, uh, well, I guess uh, you, you kind of alluded to it, but I'll, I'll let you expand on it if there's anything else. But uh, what was the impetus for Nidal? Um When did you guys, uh, uh, you know, decide that this was needed and uh, and start working on it? So initially, I, I was reading um, Andrea's book and I needed a platform to, to try all the exercises that, that he, he put in his, uh, uh, in his Bitcoin book. And uh, so I started building a full node probably, uh, now it's a little more than two years ago. It was in April 2017. Uh, and um, yeah, I was pretty happy with, with this for my own use. It was uh, running at home for more than a year. And then the, the device died. Uh, many different hardware failures, many components were dead. And I just wanted to rebuild it to, to have, it, uh, have it running. And I noticed that the hardware that I was using two years ago was not really able to uh, synchronize the Bitcoin blockchain in a reasonable time anymore. So mm -hmm. I started researching and iterating on different hardwares. Uh, and meanwhile, so that was like... Uh, mid-2018, and uh, meanwhile, the Lightning Network and BTC Pay server came out, and uh, I said, hmm, let's just put all of that together in the device. It it may be interesting to, to use together. And uh, and after seeing what it does, I thought, maybe 
maybe we actually have uh, something that people would buy because it really brings. I mean, ju just running a Bitcoin full node is pretty boring, uh, but having Lightning and a payment processor on top of that uh, makes it a real product. So that's that's how it really started. And then in uh, in Riga in September 2018, I had like a ha wires hanging everywhere prototype. Uh, which was already running uh, BTC Pay server accepting transactions uh, and made a few demos to people. And I committed to show a finished product by uh, uh, HTTP 18 in Prague. Uh, and that's how I ended up on WCN and with Max and, uh, and showed the first uh, working prototype of the notebook. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Askew, did you have anything uh, you wanted to add? Well, I mean, it's it's a, I guess a, a work in progress because, um, you know, that was the start. Um, the the, um, the WCN reaction, and so I think Max talked about it slightly, uh, just a little bit when when you had him on the pod um, recently. But um, the feedback was really good, and basically people are saying, "Do it, do it, do it." You know, make it a product, uh, sell it, and. Um, and right after that, basically, we tested the market um, by doing a, uh, a pre-sale, and we did a batch of like 21 nodules because of, you know, 21 being a magic number for Bitcoin. And so people pre-ordered it, paid up front, um, probably waited a couple months to get the, you know, the, the nodules in their own hands. And you had people who really contributed to Bitcoin who actually bought one. And then they turned it on and then they said nice things about it. And, you know, it was just like confirmation that, hey, maybe we should do this, you know? Right. And, um, and, and that's where it really started taking off. Like for us, in, in, I think we started on January 3rd, which is like Bitcoin's 10 year anniversary. Um, that's when we, we started shipping our, our first like production units. And it was only Bitcoin and BTC Pay and, and Lightning at the time, you know. And now there's so many, so many more features. Um, it's it's moving rapidly. It's evolving rapidly, um, and that's really interesting because it, it's really based on the feedback we get from our customers. Sure. Sure. So, so I guess, uh, yeah. Um, as you said, yeah. Ma Max Hillebrand and I talked. We, we talked about Nautil in some detail, but um, I guess uh, um, uh, since we, have, yeah, we have you guys on, so we'll, yeah, he'll hear directly from you guys. Um, but uh, I guess what what are some of the? Uh, I, I guess uh, what are uh, you mentioned a few of them, but what uh, what what can the Nautil do, and so uh, and, and what what uh, implementations are uh, coming in the future? So currently, when you get the Nautil, you get uh, a Bitcoin full node, Lightning node. Uh, compatibility with Zap, Joule, Zeus, Wallet, and uh, probably others. Um, you get BTC Pay Server on the box. Uh, you get Electrum X, uh, which is a full Electrum server, uh, which allows you to use the, the Electrum Wallet totally privately without uh, using any external services and avoiding the denial of services attack on the, on the Electrum servers. Um, you get Tor, of course, uh, for Bitcoin D and LND, uh, and that that's that's really what you get today with the current version. Uh, RTL. What is, yeah, and out here as a web front end to LND. Uh, what you will get in the next update is the Whirlpool mixer, which is uh, the the mixer coming from the Samurai guys. Uh, and um, we will announce the final specs and pre-orders for the Samurai version of the model, which will be a red box uh, with many hardware improvements uh, version of the of the model coming with the Dojo backend, uh, which allows you to run the Samurai wallet totally privately without using the Samurai servers. Uh, and you will get the full support from the Samurai team on the part which is related to the Samurai wallet. So this is our big milestone now. Awesome to hear. Awesome to hear. Um, so th there was something you mentioned, and uh, I'll, I'll bring it up because um, one of the uh, I, I had, uh, I guess, one of the first Bitcoin wallets I, wallets I used was something called MultiBit HD, and I used their old wallet um, for a while, and then I upgraded their new wallet, and then I got locked out of my funds from an error in their 
um, in their uh, system. Uh, but then I moved on to Electrum, and I've used that. Um, I still use that, like for um, for payments and and um, online stuff. I'll, I'll still use my my Electrum wallet. But you, you mentioned that uh, you know, like the Electrum private server allows you to have privacy with, with Electrum. Could you could you speak further uh, further to that? Yeah, so the idea is that every time you use Electrum with a public server, that public server knows your IP address, unless you use Tor, and it knows your extended public keys, uh, which are basically the keys that allows the server to derive all your uh, wallet addresses. So it, if you end up on a malicious uh, Electrum server, the server's owner could uh, analyze all your uh, all your transactions and link them together, even if you don't do any address reuse and stuff. Uh, so it's uh, it's really important if you need if you want any privacy in the Bitcoin space to run your own uh, Electrum server. Gotcha. So that would just be okay. Um, so that basically be just setting up. Um, would that be essentially just setting up a Bitcoin uh, full node with Electrum and then connecting connecting through that, or what would what would the setup for that look like? So you have the Bitcoin full node and you have an Electrum server, which can be many different implementations. We started actually with EPS, which is Electrum Personal Server. Uh, but Electrum Personal Server has some uh, caveats. For example, you have to enter your keys in the server and it can work only with one wallet uh, or with the set of wallets that you configure in the server. And now we switch to Electrum X, which allows you to use any wallet, uh, even if it doesn't know your wallet yet, uh, because it indexes the full Bitcoin blockchain on the, on the server. And then you use Electrum on your computer and you use it with a parameter which is called one server. Uh, to force it to connect only to your server and to no other server on the network. Mm. So no other server will ever get your addresses. Okay. Very good, very good. You know, I, 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 I would, uh, I, I'll probably use Wasabi myself, but I like to make sure that uh, my listeners have as many options as possible. I don't care what they, what they use for privacy, um, whatever they want to use, um, up, up to them. But uh, yeah, privacy. Yeah, so, so it's the same with Wasabi. Actually, you can use uh, Nodo as the, as the full node behind your Wasabi wallet, uh, because Wasabi lets you use your, uh, lets you use your own node as a validating node. Which is what we did for a while, actually, for our store. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Um, ask you: Is there uh, anything? Yeah. So, uh, anything so you want to add? one thing because oh, sorry, sorry, we, go, go ahead, we, we, yeah. Uh, si since we don't know the the origin and the the hygiene of our customers, uh, we are mixing all the coins we get on our store, and uh, for a long time we are using Wasabi mixer, and uh, now uh, we are using the Weopo mixer from Samurai for all the all the incoming coins we get from our customers to guarantee them some level of privacy on their coins gotcha gotcha um ask you do you have anything uh you wanted to add um yeah i mean it, i mean to, to answer the same question in a very different way maybe is um you know this gives a uh, maybe a a list of features etc but um basically what we're we're trying to offer is um a single box that's dedicated to Bitcoin and everything that you do that has to do with Bitcoin and nothing else, okay? Because we see it as as a, a security problem if basically you're running your Bitcoin on your, your computer where you have your, your emails, your browsing for your kids or whatever. Um, so it's, it's a dedicated device. And that packages several things that are useful services when you interact with Bitcoin and that usually are not put together so that your entire experience of Bitcoin always have like gaping holes, basically. Um, and the more we move forward, the better the experience is that, you know, you contribute to the network because you're running your node and, you know, no one sees what you're looking at. Uh, you're hiding behind Tor, et cetera, um, in, in a convenient way, because basically our users just one click install every single component they want. And basically they're kind of customize their, their own experience, but it all comes together. And that's what's important is that you have to have the complete setup in a way, which up till now, only someone really knowledgeable could do. 
Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that's, 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 that's great to hear. That's, uh, definitely great to hear. So <clears throat> I guess, um, uh, I, I guess the, the next thing I, 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 I won't know many, I won't, I won't know much about this, but my listeners uh, might be curious. So uh, what's, uh, so what, what's inside of uh, one of these nodal devices, uh, processors, chips, uh, et cetera. Um, so, uh, in the current Nodo, you have a main board, which is a ROG64. It's like a higher-end Raspberry Pi uh, clone uh, with more memory, faster memory. It used to have a faster processor, but it's not true anymore with the new Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, it has um, basically one board, which is like the power management board, which also serves as a a USB to SATA uh, converter, and it has an SSD drive, so a flash drive. Uh, because in the many iterations I I made of this device, I noticed that one key component in having a fast initial block download on the Bitcoin full node is to have a fast storage, and uh, you you will not get a faster storage than an SSD drive today. Very good. Very yeah, good. which is, I think, what you were saying, Jane, that you have experience with that. Right, right. <clears throat> so um, I, I guess, uh, and I guess this was something that, uh, um, that uh, I, I guess you, you might have brought up in passing, um, um, ask you, but uh, what's so so what's the user friendliness like of a noddle? Um, I've mentioned I mentioned in a couple podcasts that I was uh, getting a noddle from from a listener, um, but I, it's actually a Casa note. So um, I'll be uh, I'll be testing that out first, then I'll be getting uh, getting a noddle. But uh, what's what's the user friendliness like? I mean, uh, you mentioned that these are just one click installs. Um, so is any technical knowledge necessary to uh, you know run your Bitcoin full node, uh, run your Lightning Network node, um, to you know be your own you know cold storage Bitcoin vault, like uh, how, how hard are these things to do on uh, on uh, the Nautil device? I guess yes and no. I don't know. Um, it It is easy in the sense that you you, you get, you know, a, a quick start guide, a getting started guide with probably half a dozen steps just to set up your password and in and get access to the user interface, you know, on your web browser. And then you have like different tiles. Every tile is a different feature, basically. Um, if you click on the feature, it installs the component. Um, and then if you click a second time, it starts running it. And basically that's all you have to do, okay? Um, now the thing is, it is open. And you can interact with it a lot more if you have any command line interface like skills, you can do whatever you want with it. But theoretically, you should be capable of one click installing everything. Um, now you, you have to be realistic too, is that people will have all sorts of questions. And what we've noticed that's really, really cool, and it helps us a ton in, in, in you know, determining what we want to do and, and how we want to evolve is we have that Telegram channel where our, our users are, you know, talking all the time and, and they ask questions. Uh, people help each other out a ton, um, you know, and they'll learn from their own, you know, the answers they get and then they'll help the people who come in later with the same questions. Uh, but you, you feel there's a lot of builders who are starting to hop on and um, try to give you a little bit of a helping hand, you know? So I, I guess it's the, the first users are, are really the people who are willing to take a little more risk and, you know, potentially go through, through a little bit of pain at first. Um, but everybody's managing to do it, um, even if they have no technical background. Right. Right. And I, and I will say I've been I've been very impressed over the past uh, over the past couple of years um, since I've been looking into open source projects and such. Um, the user friendliness like the I guess the, the gap to entry has lowered a lot. 
Um, so that's that's a, a very positive thing. I mentioned that Wasabi was just super easy to use, um, which for you know a privacy wallet. My last experience was uh, was the Monero GUI wallet, and that was just a disaster. Um, I'm not gonna you know recount that story again. But um, so I, I I see that going in a positive direction. Um, obviously, still early on. This is uh, you know open source stuff. There's gonna be bugs. There's gonna be problems. Um, but uh, you know um, that's what the open source community is for. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've, 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 I've Wasabi thing. For oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. The, the Wasabi, um, while it is very easy to, to use, obviously, um, and if you look online, you, you actually have videos that tell you how to, how to check the signatures to make sure that whatever you're installing is really what you're expecting, which is really important you should do. And if you want to connect it to your own node, um, there's just a file to change so you can do it too. Um, but sometimes people just don't know how to do it. What's really fun to see is they will come to you and ask those questions and you'll see people within the community help them out. And um, more and more people are getting onboarded to whatever platform it is or application or, or wallet these days. Um, you feel there's a, a lot of demand and it's getting easier and the few pain points you have, um, at least you can identify and, and um, people are getting over it. Right. And I'm talking non-technical people. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, that's, I, I, I kind of see that, uh, that, that similar shift. Uh, Keto Miner, do you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I, I would just add, we, I, I think probably more than half of our users will never use any command line and just use the the graphical user interface uh, through the through the browser, um, and and that's okay. I mean that that's the end goal of this of this device, and we will probably shift to a model where you will have a a basic mode in which the UI will hide everything from you, and an advanced mode in which you will enable the the power user features uh, allowing you to go to the command line and do whatever you want. Right, right. And, okay. and quite frankly, no one cares what's behind, you know, or should in a, in a I mean, if you want people to be able to use it um, easily. Right. Yeah. Do you do you think uh, do, do you think people understand the infrastructure of the internet and and uh, you know HTTP and SSL and all those things? Uh, your general internet user doesn't doesn't give a damn about any of those things. They care that their browser opens, they can type in the address, and that they can interact. Um, and uh, you know that's that's obviously that's obviously the you know the the goal right for Bitcoin is is that it's so easy that grandma can use it. Um, and in many ways, in, in many ways, it's getting easier. The one thing, though, that that is different, I mean, because I agree that, I mean, basically, you know, I, I totally agree with that. It, the one difference with Bitcoin is you are supposed to check. Um, so what do you check, et, et cetera? But there's like, if you're interested in Bitcoin, you're interested in, I need to be responsible to, for myself, for whoever is around me, um, that there are certain things that I shouldn't rely on someone else. I shouldn't rely on whatever the bank or someone or the government or et cetera. A, a lot of that's built into the whole system is like things that are important. I need to be able to check by myself. Mm -hmm. So you need to dumb it down. They don't need to see the pipes and whatever's behind, but they need to be able to do certain things that are taking the matter in, in their own hands in a way, you know? Right. So where is that? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's a good point. That's uh, that is a good point because uh, there's there's no uh, there's no Bitcoin bank you can call to reverse a transaction or you know un unlock your account or anything like that. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm with I'm yeah I'm I'm, I'm totally with you. Um, that's uh, obviously would be uh, <laughs> then again you know B Bitcoin requires a lot more I guess um, a, a lot more. Um, security concern than uh, you know a general bank account you don't have to worry about it at all your bank just takes care of it for you so um yeah there, there's certainly that response that's uh, that responsibility um so yeah people should know people should definitely know what uh, what they're what they're using and, and how it works and all that but uh uh keto monitor do you have anything to add uh not really <laughs> okay 
All right, very good. So um, I guess uh, just uh, some general questions on, uh, I guess, uh, uh, just some general questions here. Um, what's, uh, I guess, just, yeah, so, so what's your uh, general take on uh, Bitcoin right now? I guess this could be anything from the innovation in the space, uh, its uh, its current price, if uh, if, if you guys, uh, uh, if, any, if other of you look at that, um, it's uh, treatment by governments, uh, et cetera, just, uh, you know, your, your general take on Bitcoin. I think a lot more people are interested than before. Um, I I think a lot of people also are starting to respect the fact that it's starting to have enough history, enough weight that if it hasn't been, you know, really severely um, breached up till now, it's probably because it's very, very resistant, very resilient. Um, and that has value in itself. And I think what, what we've kind of noticed, and, and that's why it's important for us to, to talk to people who, who actually use, for example, the model, is um, we're seeing some merchants um, understand in a way that they would benefit from being exposed to Bitcoin meaning that they get like fiat currency, you know, credit card or, or, or cash payments every day. Um, they see there's another asset class. It's not correlated um, that appreciates really fast in value that maybe they would like to be exposed to, but they don't want to do the KYC. They don't want to declare it, et cetera, et cetera. If you could add some kind of functionality for them where they could accept payments, um, they don't have to rely on anyone else because they're going to be running their own infrastructure. All of a sudden, you see a ton of people who say, well, you know what? If I can do that myself, no one knows about it, I'm going to do it. And if it's easy and there's a lot of security behind it because I've run the whole stack, I'm going to do it. And I don't have to go all in. So I, I think there's a lot of people who are curious who say, OK, I'm going to diversify a little bit because I actually want to be paid in Bitcoin. And I think there's more and more of that. And if people do that, the price can only go up. Yeah. 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 I would, uh, I would agree. Um, so, uh, Keto Miner, uh, what do you think? Uh, what's your uh, general take on Bitcoin? Uh, I would have um, a pretty short-term pessimistic point of view because uh, as a business uh, it becomes increasingly harder to use bitcoin actually we we accept only bitcoin payments and uh, we pay our suppliers in fiat and uh, the conversion is becoming really harder and harder every day um, so i think we for some time it will be still becoming increasingly high, harder because the the regulators and the governments will do any anything possible to make it hard for us. Uh, and maybe during that time, the price will be stable or, or, or still going a little down. And uh, yeah, uh, as soon as we'll be able to have a circular economy in Bitcoin only and uh, not have to convert to fiat, uh, then things will really change. And uh, that's what we are waiting for. Yes, yes, that's uh, that's a good point because if if the if the on ramps and off ramps off ramps aren't necessary, then uh, there's uh, there's there's really uh, nothing that they uh, there's really nothing that they can regulate. Uh, I mean, over the course of the past couple of few weeks, um, I'm not sure if you guys have uh, I've been watching little update videos, um, little clips because I'm I'm not about to sit through a six hour you know Senate hearing or anything like that. Um, but uh, you know there. Um, there have been, uh, you know, a number of uh, a number of these uh, political uh, crusaders who um, admitted, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, the difference between Libra and, and Bitcoin is we can control Libra. We can't control Bitcoin. Um, so there were a number of politi a number of politicians that said th that said that in those hearings. So it's good that that message is uh, is, is, uh, is is finally getting clear. Um so yeah, the the next step is really you know building building this this Bitcoin ag economy, building you know building the agora, and um, yeah, once once we can uh, subvert that, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, I, I think uh, you know more. Uh, I think that's uh, that's certainly beneficial. Yeah, and, and you know, I I think the best way we have to succeed short term is to go to other people who have trouble uh, working with the normal system and which are 
prosecuted by the by the by the normal system like uh for example meat is something which is becoming more and more like bad to eat uh so there is definitely something to do in a parallel economy of of meat eating uh anything related to drugs of course uh, even legal drugs it's it's not so easy to have a dispenser in the united states because you you get uh, shit tons of cash and uh, and basically few banks want to open your bank account so you have to keep these stashes of cash in your shop uh, then you have to hire security guards and and so on so uh, using uh, using bitcoin can solve that problem and uh, and the alternative or breakthrough medicine uh, sector as well. I mean, there are many things which are like controversial in medicine right now, but which look pretty efficient. And uh, the doctors that practice it can't talk about it publicly. Uh, but if they do it on a private alternative market, uh, they they could do it for cryptocurrency and uh, and make some people happy by healing them. Yeah, yeah, and, and I guess I'll mention just uh, for the for the benefit of the listeners here, at least here in the United States, for um, like in Colorado and Washington or California, where uh, marijuana has been legalized and it's taxed, um, those mis- businesses can't even utilize any banks in the United States because it's still federally legal. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> um, so, so yeah, like they they so it's it's cash it's cash only in Bitcoin. I mean, they can't they 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 can't really interact all that. They can't really interact with the you know the 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 first realm banking industry because yeah, it's still still federally federally legal and the entire banking uh, sector is highly regulated by the federal government. So, um, yeah, uh, we'll 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 have to see. We'll have to see. I mean, uh, um, I'm always uh, you know I it, it's. We don't know how it's going to turn out. Uh, we don't know what the, what the, how things are going to look in five or ten years or fifteen or twenty or fifty or uh, et cetera. But um, one thing I do know is that uh, I can be pretty damn confident. Um, you know, minus some crazy, some something crazy happening in the future, um, that Bitcoin will be around regardless of what the price is. The technology will still be usable. It'll still be um, functional, um, and uh, you know we can still use it to transfer value, um, you know, in, in, in the underground. So that's that. That's what I, uh, you know, uh, regardless of what happens, um, I, I can be uh, pretty confident of that. Uh, what do you guys think? I tend to agree, and I think there's more people than before who who are getting exposed to it and who who are using it or who are stocking up a little bit. Um, so eventually, I kind of see the possibility. At least it's a hope. Maybe it, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but it's a hope that your your restaurant, your bartender, who's going to accept some payments, you know, off the books, um, will act as your exchange counter, and that's how you 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 build that opportunity to to buy and sell um, for everyday people um a little bit and um to do it without those those crazy like kyc and all that stuff that you know just has no sense um so i can see it happening i don't know maybe it's just a wish um but i think it's possible and i i don't think it's that far off necessarily and i think that's what your decentralized exchanges are it's decentralized people all over the place who have enough to buy and sell here and there Period. Mm-hmm. You just happen to have to know them, you know. And I guess that's the thing: is now that you have enough tools, you actually need to build more of a community, more people, you know. Yes, definitely agree. Yeah, you've got to have people using the tools, right? Um, you got to have people using Bitcoin um, to uh, to spend or receive it. So, um, yeah, keto miner, what do you, uh, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I think the only thing that would stop Bitcoin is some major technical flaw that no one's seen. <laughs> uh, but if we if we don't find that, uh, yeah, it's probably unstoppable. And uh, about what jo, as you said, um, every time we go to some conference, there is some guy acting as a human ATM for someone else. And this is probably the way it should more and more happen. It's like local Bitcoins minus the website. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing tomorrow. You know, and that's, I think, what more and more people do. And it's very beneficial. And that's also how you get to meet people, you know? Yeah. Um, exactly. Exactly. It, it's great if you have great tools. If you don't have people to use them, it kind of sucks. Right. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I certainly agree. So, uh, um, I don't have any other uh, questions on my outline. I guess I'll turn it over to you guys for, uh, for any closing thoughts you might have, uh, for the listeners, uh, um, let them know uh, where they can, uh, you know, uh, get the noddle where they can uh, connect with you, uh, all that good stuff. One question maybe that I, I would have is like, I don't know when I reached out to you, like probably like a month or two ago. Um, because I, I had, you know, I think I kind of remember seeing you or, or on YouTube first, and then I listened to a few pods, and eventually it was the whole Smuggler pod, too, that I listened to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I was aware of you for a while. But um, what I thought was really interesting is I'm convinced, outside of our, our Bitcoin-only like community, there's a lot of other communities who don't necessarily know these tools or have them or know how to use them, et cetera, but who share the same beliefs. And sometimes you kind of think it it's just a matter of, of meeting these people and, and, you know, crossing that border. Um, so I thought that's why we, we, we should talk. Um, what do you think we can do or the other way around, other people can can help us with um, so that we, we defend more liberty, privacy, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's a good question, and um, you know, like it, it, it's been interesting, like uh, you know, with uh, Bitcoin and crypto anarchy, uh, you know, injecting that into Volna because uh, you know a lot of these folks just pursued a lifestyle change, uh, you know, for personal freedom or for apolitical reasons altogether. Um, but I think, like, uh, like for for things like the noddle, um, I mean, really, uh, it's it's kind of the theme of what, we, what we've been discussing is um, people just have to be aware of the tools and how it'll benefit their lives. Um, and uh, what I when I talked to Matt, Max and he was he was saying that the the noddle the noddle can be ran uh, you know off like uh, you know off batteries like uh, in a in an off grid van like I could see um, gosh <laughs> yeah I mean there there's a huge market for people with alternative lifestyles um, especially for people who are perpetual travelers or something like that um, if they've got to uh, you know take their uh, you know, carry their, uh, uh, well, I guess they don't necessarily have to carry their Bitcoin with them, but, um, I don't know. I, 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 I see a lot of potential there for, for a lot of these tools. And that's why, um, I, I'm always, it's, I'm always interested to see who's, who's interested in, in, in Vanu and who, who finds out about it because, uh, <clears throat> yeah, a lot, a lot of the folks, uh, a lot of folks don't really have, uh, um, they, they really don't know much beyond a, a singular subject. Um, like a, a, as far as volume lifestyles. So um, I don't know. Uh, I think it just comes down to, to marketing and kind of doing what you guys are doing, going on, on podcasts and just let, let people know that these tools exist. Um, and I, that's, 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 that's my feedback is, uh, is that I, I can't think of any, anything else um, technical, what you could offer on the noddle. Um, from, from what I see there, it has, it has everything that I would need, uh, need for, for a Bitcoin use. So um, <clears throat> Yeah, okay. but it doesn't have to be technical. You know, it can really be like you said, someone who says no. But I, we actually had users who said, "I bought one, but I haven't installed yet because I don't know where to put it because I'm traveling all the time," and that raised all sorts of questions in our minds. And we'll we'll have like versions of the basically the same stack that you can actually rent, and um, we maintain it like in Switzerland for for you. Um, because people actually need that as a service and that they will use the box they won't use because they don't have a home mm -hmm. uh, or maybe their home is the van. And once you add the, the satellite, for example, et cetera, you can make it work. But you need to see what the pain points are for people who would like to use it or use it, but have some kind of problem. And, and we need to be able to talk to sometimes these people we don't know. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I guess uh, what one thing I know I can do is uh, I'll, I'll I'll think about that more um, and see if I see if I see what's what sort of objections I could um, you know hypothesize from uh, from some individuals and uh, and I'll will see what I can come up with and, and I'll let you guys know. But yeah, that's that's all I can think of um, off the top of my head is letting people know that these tools exist because I, I've mentioned like uh, we did a, an episode on ZeroNet um, last year and there what there just wasn't a lot there wasn't really anyone, i kind of stumbled across it accidentally um like that's a, it's a it's a pretty cool you know tool very easy to use it to and to get into their ecosystem um but no one knows about it so like, a lot of people don't know about it right um so um yeah i, I think that's kind of just the general thing just scream it from the rooftops let people know that uh 
that it exists. I think that's that's most important. <laughs> yeah, and I think the the future we we are not publicizing that a lot because it's very experimental and we we don't have much time to work on it. But it's something we are thinking all the time about uh, the hardware add-ons you can have on another, like the Gotenna, like LoRa One, uh, and the uh, and the BlockSim satellite can let you run your phone node totally offline and uh, transmit transactions anytime you pass through some peer who has a, a relay to the relay unit transactions. So um, yeah, well, there, there is the, the, the hosted side of uh, of the node as a service, let's call it or another cloud, but there is also the node with uh, radio add-ons to run it totally offline uh, without any internet connection. And uh, yeah, uh, that that's another future we, we totally see for the product. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be I, I like I, I don't know um I, I don't know how this would, would would work all technically, but it'd be really awesome. Like uh, since since Lighting Network, um, not every transaction is settled on chain. I wonder like I wonder how easy it would be to to just do like uh you know offline Lightning Network payments and then yeah as you were saying have a relay node connected to the internet and when you pass by that that node then your transactions uh, you know are relayed your your Lightning Network channel is closed and settled on chain. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really, really, uh, I mentioned it earlier in the interview. I, I, I love that. Um, I mean, you guys added Goten on Noddle. Um, so, I mean, you, you see a, a possible use case and a possible need for uh, Bitcoin to be off-grid resistant, you know. Um, so, um, I don't know. I've, all, all I've really got is good things to say. Um, Really, because uh, you know the, these tools need to be built. Um, you know, just like Jamie Baconic building ghost pads and and you know mobile hacking uh, tools and sh tools and stuff for Benuans. I, I the, these tools need to be built, and uh, yeah, and I'll do as as, as much as I can in uh, in helping to promote it. I'll actually uh, well, one thing I'll do is I'll add Noddle to our building the Agora segment, so I'll promote it in uh, every single episode. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that then. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> No problem. So yeah. Anyways, I mean, we're, we're open to any questions or, or, or comments. Like people c can reach us out um, easily the, on um, our website. I think there's like the details for like our, our various like social media accounts, like uh, Twitter or, or Telegram. Um, so yeah, the, I, I think the important point is don't hesitate to come to our Telegram channel, which is uh, Nodo underscore IT on Telegram. Uh, there is a lot of interesting people there in addition to us and uh, and our customers and not customers and uh, yeah it, it's a very interesting community it's it's way beyond the normal now awesome awesome and yeah i will put uh, the link to uh, all of your uh, twitter accounts uh the link to the uh, website people can purchase and again i highly recommend you do um i'm going to get on it as soon as i i want to test out the ca the casa note first i told i told the uh um i told the listener um, I was like, that's okay. That, that's okay. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll just, w I'll wait to buy the Noddle and I'll just test out the Casa first, and then I'll get the Noddle and compare and contrast. Uh, because I don't know, that needs to be done too. What's, uh, you know, what's, uh, what, what are the uh, various use cases for each uh, piece of hardware? What can they do and advantages and disadvantages and uh, user friendliness and all that good stuff. So, um, again, yeah, thank you guys so much for for uh, for your service and uh, building Noddle. It's uh, definitely needed. Uh, anything else before I let you go? Oh no, just a, a big thank you for, for having us on. It was really fun. Um, I actually noticed uh, a few months ago that you, you were getting into publishing. So, you know, I think that's, it's really great. It's something that that's important. Uh, maybe it's something that I will need at some point too. So, uh, you know, I think we, we, you know, just keep in touch because uh, uh, what you, you are doing is awesome. So, so it, it's always very interesting to, you know, talk to you or, pe or people who might, be interested in all these things of course of course well yeah i i certainly appreciate that and yeah if there's uh ever anything we can do to help you publish a book we'd uh we'd love to so um yeah i'll put i'll put all links in the show notes thanks again guys for coming on and uh thank you uh, uh the listener for uh, for tuning in um yeah so uh, again that website is shop.nodl.it shop.nodl.it uh go pick one up and uh yeah check out the website vanupodcast.com and uh until next time let's build the agora and let's build second realms building the agora Here at the Vanu Podcast, we understand the importance of the Agora and recognize the necessity of supporting its traders. 
This section of the show is called Building the Agora, wherein we highlight great Agora's businesses, podcasts, or otherwise still preparation of media. First off is the parent pack of locations. If you're looking for strategy guides, Agora's fiction, or other tools to build your freedom, you need to take a look at what we have to offer. Just visit lipanderpack.com and take 10% off your order by using coupon code SELFLIBERATE. We also offer assistance to new authors in navigating the publishing process. From proofreading, editing your manuscript, to Kindle and paperback formatting, all the way to full audiobook production. We can help you with all of it. If that's a service you may be interested in, please visit libertarianfact.com slash public. If you're like me, you may also enjoy starting your mornings off with a book and a delicious cup of coffee. Well, I've got good news for you. Jay Catano has a great business called Anarcho Coffee, and he's giving you a lifetime 10% discount code, LUA10. Head over to anarchocoffee.com and pick up a bag of Volunteer Style Howl, Rothbard Roast, or some merchandise. I personally drink Rothbard Roast most mornings, and it's absolutely delicious. Highly recommend. Again, that is anarchocoffee.com, and use LUA10 to take 10% off your order. I've often complained about the lack of self operational media. Hell, it's why my first podcast radio show focused on solutions and why this podcast exists. If you're sick of hearing libertarians bitch and complain all the time and instead want tools for your self liberation, check out the Liberty Forge podcast hosted by my friends Kyle Turnblazer and Merrick Van Landingham. They cover all sorts of topics, and it's one of these shows I make time to listen to every single week. Check them out at thelibertyforge.com. Recently, I interviewed Dr. Michael Laufer from the Four Thieves Vinegar Collective. We talked about the importance of health when it comes to self liberation. Well, our newest addition to the Building the Agora segment is Love Java. Our Age of Enlightenment runs on Love Java, the gateway to your health freedom. Have the ultimate superfood elixir anytime, anywhere with Love Java CBD-infused high-performance butter coffee concentrate packs. Liberty begins within. Start every day with Love Java for breakfast and live free now. Like the Facebook page and check out lovejava.com, that's L-U-V, java.com for more info or you can private message them on facebook for any questions or to place your custom handcrafted order now again that is lovejava.com lastly is the enemy of the state's dank pod stash hosted by nick irwin and david valentine they have a really great podcast that i would definitely recommend in addition to a store with some incredible shirt designs you can find their work by visiting thedankpodstash.com again their site is thedankpodstash.com that's all for now. Make sure to check out the show notes for links to all of these great businesses and podcasts. Building Eagle.